if you're a fan of the Spectra Creative channel, you're probably a adult toy collector between the ages of 30 and 50, and you're probably a guy. How do I know this? Well, because YouTube tells us these things in our audience statistics. All right, so with that established, this means that most likely you grew up in the 1970s or 80s and were fortunate enough to have a huge variety of places you could go to buy toys. In fact, the toy buying experience in the 80s when we were kids was part of the toy itself, getting to pick it out, getting to, to find it in the aisle. We don't really have this anymore because most retail toy stores have kind of shuttered. We have Target and Walmart these days. Stores that either had a toy department or even were fully uh, toy stores, like Toys R Us, have kind of gone the, uh, the way of the big bagel. I'm Scott Toy Guru Knight. Like, I've worked in the toy industry for over 25 years, and what I want to talk about is where we buy our toys today, and specifically online, and specifically Amazon. Why do I want to do a video about buying toys on Amazon? I mean, not everyone shops on Amazon. I mean, not everyone is a Prime member. A lot of people don't, specifically because they're not a Prime member. Well, the reason why I want to do a deep dive on Amazon today, or at least for the next four minutes, if you call that a deep dive, is because it's really astonishing how much you can learn about the toy industry by analyzing what's for sale on Amazon. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so here I've brought up a recent Marvel Legend at retail right now, and you can see it's $25, and 1,000 have been bought in the last month. Ah, see, that's the key. Amazon tells you how many they've sold in an effort to convince people to buy more or to make a purchase based on groupthink or the fact that multiple people have that. So let's do the math. Outside of Amazon, our two major distributors of toys are, as I mentioned, Walmart and Target. So Walmart currently has a little under 5,000 doors in the U.S. That's what retailers call uh, refer to it as a door. And Target has about 1,800 doors in the U.S. All right, so let's round those up together and let's just say 7,000 doors. All right. Now, most retailers will take two case packs per assortment. Right, the, uh, the, the brown boxes that get wheeled in and then uh, you're lucky if it gets put out on the pegs in time for you to purchase. So that means if, you've, if you have 7,000 doors, you're trying to avoid clearance because that's why stores don't order more. And that brings you roughly to about 14,000 units. 14,000 per figure, just at Target and Walmart. Well, you're saying, okay, well, there's a lot more than Target and Walmart. Yeah, but they're so tiny. I mean, look, Amazon. A thousand. All of Amazon, around the whole world, the whole country, and they've sold a thousand. Versus another figure that's recent, they've sold 50. Does that kind of help put things into perspective? Items that don't sell as well tend to, well, lead to clearance and cancellation. And this is what retailers are trying to avoid because it's extremely costly for them. Another thing we can learn from Amazon besides quota is what's not selling. So looking at some of these figures that are on sale for over 50% off, Amazon's kind of always there as opposed to target sales that are usually only a week long. And this is a good insight into what brands are working, which characters are working, and which ones are not. Just looking at which figures get put on discount, things like Amazon Choice or Limited Time Deal. Other times it can be entire sort of, uh, well, I guess, houses of characters like the Fantastic Four. Kids don't really know who they are these days, and an obscure villain for the Fantastic Four? Yeah, there's a reason that that's peg warming on Amazon. Other times you can see comparisons. I mean, look, the two twins from G.I. Joe are at two different price points. All right, let's stop picking on uh, Marvel and G.I. Joe. Star Wars, also another great example. New figure, 200. Old figure, 400. What this shows is that characters that are more popular, like The Mandalorian, are still selling better. You can also look at comparing price points at different scales. So here we have two Sabine figures. The six inch on the right there is $25. The three and three fourth on the left, you have to click for price, but it's actually $27. So you're essentially seeing on Amazon two completely different scales at basically, well, technically the three and three fourth is more expensive. Another interesting thing you can learn from Amazon is seeing reissues and how they clog the pipe. Palpatine has been reissued three times. And look, same exact figure, three different price points. Because Amazon keeps each package version available, unlike Target or Walmart that only carry the current, it gives you an insight into how often a figure is being re-released and how well they're selling. 
You can also get a snapshot of a brand and how well it's doing. Not that I want to pick on Masters of the Universe at all, but you can see almost every figure is over 50% off. Not a healthy thing. You want to see these at least at SRP, if not higher. Things like G.I. Joe Classified consistently sell at SRP. Honestly, one of the best-selling collector lines out there, and I'm honestly blown away by the success that the Classified line has given. So yeah, Amazon is an amazing tool, not just for buying things, but for analyzing the toy industry to understand quotas, character appeal, what's selling and what's not. I hope this was an interesting uh, look at retail and online retail. Have you noticed anything on Amazon I haven't covered that would be a great takeaway? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, sharing, and as always, thank you for supporting the Spectra Creative Channel. See you guys next time.